I'm on social media all the time. I'm on TikTok. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram. I'm creating a ton of content. I'm going live all the time and I'm answering questions. Most of the people that watch my stuff have at least a surface level interest in real estate investing, but they don't know where to start. I get asked all the time, where do I start? What is the first step I should take? So in this video, I'm going to go over the top three ways that 99% of people invest in real estate. I'm going to go over the pros and the cons of each method so you can decide which one's your favorite and which one you're going to go after first. So let's talk real estate. The first way most people get into the real estate investing game is wholesaling. Wholesaling real estate is awesome. It's getting a property under contract to purchase. So you're in the house with the seller and you get a contract signed stating that you are going to be purchasing the property. However, you don't end up closing on the property. You end up selling that contract to an end buyer, to an end investor that has the money and that they close on the property for a fee and you get paid the difference. For example, you can get a property under contract to purchase for $100,000 and you can sell that contract to somebody else for $20,000 so that end buyer pays $120,000, the person that you bought the house from gets paid $100,000 and you get paid that $20,000 difference. You're acting kind of like a middleman, almost like a real estate agent, but for investors. You get paid a fee for connecting sellers and buyers. This is a great way to get started because there's not a ton of work. There's a lot of pros that come along with wholesaling. One of the biggest ones is you don't have to use any money. You don't need money because you're not closing on the property. So if you have bad credit or don't feel like doing any work on properties, this is a great way to make a good chunk of money and not have to actually close on them. Another advantage would be you don't actually have to do any repairs. You're not in the property fixing it up. You're not doing anything. You're literally just getting it under contract and selling that contract and then you're done. So there's not a ton of work that goes involved after the property gets under contract and you get it sold. And if you do it right, there is literally zero risk. If you get properties under contract with some type of a contingency that allows you to get out of the contract that the seller knows about, you can have a zero risk investment because if you can't sell it, you don't close and you don't have to pay anything. Some of the cons are, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to dig up these properties. The other investment strategies that I'm gonna talk about, you can kind of buy from a wholesaler, but if you're wholesaling, you need to be the source of the deal. So getting these properties under contracts requires a lot of hard work. It requires a lot of effort, which some people may or may not wanna do. Also, you don't make as much money usually as the people that are buying the house, taking the risk, flipping it, and selling it. So you can definitely make good money, but you're not quite making as much money as you would had you taken down that property and rehabbed it yourself. Lastly, there's no really long-term out. If you want to make money wholesaling, you have to wholesale day in, day out, day in, day out. There's no long-term strategy that allows you to create passive wealth and generational wealth and income coming in without working. Before I talk about the second way that most people invest in real estate, I'd ask you to please give this video a like. I'd really appreciate it. It helps our channel. The second way that most people invest in real estate and a way that you're probably aware of is fixing and flipping. It's all over HGTV and all over different YouTube channels, fixing and flipping a house. Buying a house, potentially from a wholesaler we talked about in section one, buying a house at a discount that needs a lot of work a handyman special, a fixer upper, buying a house and putting work into it, repairing that house, rehabbing that house, and then selling it to an end buyer. It's a great way to make a lot of money, but there are pros and cons. One of the main pros is you can make a lot of money. If you buy a distressed house at a deep discount and put a lot of work and effort into it and flip it and sell it on the open market, especially in today's hot market, you can make a lot of money. Also, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to take a house and put in a new kitchen, put in new floors, pick out the granite countertops, pick out the cabinets, all that fun stuff that goes into taking something that's not livable or not very nice and making it livable and making it nice. There's a lot of fun and satisfaction that goes along with that one. Another advantage to this one is you don't have to use your own money. You can use other people's money. You can use a hard money lender or a private money lender to buy the property and fix it up and then when you sell it, hopefully for a lot of profit, you pay them back their money plus interest and then you get the rest as profit. Now there are some cons because there is some risk that goes along with this. You are the one that's putting your butt on the line to buy the property, you're closing on it in you or your business's name, and then you have to coordinate and get contractors or hire somebody to do that. So there's risk involved. When you're wholesaling, you're not closing, but when you're fixing and flipping, you have to close. So there is some level of risk. 
If you understand the process and buy a house at a deep enough discount, that risk is limited, but that risk is there. Again, with fixing and flipping, there's no really long-term play here. You have to actively fix and actively flip and sell to make money. There's no way to sit back and passively make money fixing and flipping. Now, on to my personal favorite, number three, owning rental properties. I love owning rental properties. It's owning an asset, usually a house or an apartment complex or a storage facility, some type of asset, some type of real estate that you rent out to somebody else. They pay you rent every month and that rent covers all your owning expenses plus your mortgage. So if you do it right, you don't have any money out of pocket while you own that property. And guess what? That property goes up in value and that tenant pays the mortgage down. So that spread that I talk about a lot grows, so your net worth grows and you get cash flow along the way. You're usually not making a ton of money every month, but that equity that you're gaining and that cash flow you're getting is a great way to get long-term passive income. This is the way that people create that wealth that I talk about. Not many people get wealthy wholesaling or fixing and flipping. Yeah, you can make chunks of money, and yeah, you can get rich, but not many people get wealthy and create that long-term generational wealth through flipping or wholesaling. It always happens through owning rental properties. There's a ton of different ways to get rental properties. I'm not going to break them all down in this video, but just know if you want to use your money, you can put 20% down on rental properties. If you want to use other people's money, you can do that with the Burr's method. This video above, I go into a lot more detail on the Burr method with a real life example and explain how you can buy rental properties with other people's money. There's also subject to, there's owner financing. There's so many options in owning long-term rental assets without using your money or using their money. It's really, really awesome. All right, let's talk about some pros for owning rental properties. I already hit on a few of them, but let's go a little bit deeper. When you own rental properties, you are creating a source of passive income. There's nothing better, in my opinion, than having money come in every single month, whether you work or not. The old saying, landlords get wealthy in their sleep means you're creating wealth by sleeping and not doing anything because that rental property is going up in value, the tenant's paying the note down, and you're collecting cash flow. And you can do this as many times as you want. I have 140 rental properties and I'm planning to buy a lot more. There's no limit to how wealthy you can become and how much generational wealth you can create owning rental properties. Now, there definitely are some cons. There are some risk involved. If you don't know what you're doing or you don't know how to manage houses or manage tenants, you can definitely get in some sticky situations. However, you can hire that part out if you want to and have somebody else manage that and take on some of that risk and help mitigate that risk by managing the properties properly, or you can learn and do it yourself. Also, this is a long-term play. You're not going to create massive wealth or create big chunks of money right away. Over time, you definitely can, but as you're building that rental portfolio, you're getting little chunks of money at a time, but you're creating massive equity. So in order to get into the rental property game, you kind of have to have more of a long-term mindset. So people ask me all the time, which one should I do? And I always tell them, you don't have to pick just one. Honestly, you can be looking for a fix and flip, a house to buy, rehab, and repair. And if it doesn't make sense as a fix and flip, just wholesale it off. Or you can be doing a fix and flip and turn it into a rental property if it makes sense and if the numbers play out. So you don't have to pigeonhole yourself to one specific strategy. Now, if you have one you really like, go after it. But if you're willing to have an open mind and take each deal and figure out which exit strategies works best for each deal, that's where you can really, really make quality decisions and maximize whatever asset you're buying's potential. Hopefully you saw some value out of this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button so you get notified when we release new videos and also when I go live. See you on the next one.